Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our talk. And uh, my name is Tano. I'm with the uh, IBM uh, from the IBM Silicon Valley Lab in San Jose, California. We have uh, our colleague here, Winnie uh, Sang, also from IBM, and uh, Ricardo uh, Rocha, and uh, uh, Spiros Chukasi from the CERN Lab. Right. So uh, we uh, we know that uh, uh, Magnum. Uh, uh, can deploy container uh, or, or the infra infrastructure for container in OpenStack, so that's not new. But uh, before we, a production team uh, is willing to adopt Magnum and run in production, they would, they would want to know how things scale when there's a lot of users on, on a system. And they want to know um, how robust the system is when you, you have error. Right? So uh, a few months ago, we embarked on this study to understand how Magnum and container behave on a large scale. And luckily, we have uh, access to uh, two environments to do this, uh, one from the CERN lab and one from the CNCF lab. So on, on this talk, we would like to share our, what we found so far. Uh, now, doing scalability study is an ongoing work, so this is not a complete uh, a finished you know, study by any means, but we just want to share what we found so far. So this is the outline for our talk. I will begin by a, a quick review of uh, Magnum and the, the future in the Newton release, um, and uh, some of the more uh, the the, uh, the uh, uh, kind of benchmark we want to look, look at. We is going to go into the details for the benchmark, and then uh, Ricardo will talk about the uh, result we found at CERN, and then uh, uh, Spiros will look at show you the result from the CNCF uh, lab uh, cloud. Right, and then we had a conclusion. So now we, we didn't do all this by ourselves. We got a lot of help. So we want to acknowledge the, uh, the CERN Cloud team who gave us a lot of help to, at CERN. We want to uh, thank the CNCF lab for providing the uh, uh, hardware for us to do this study. We want to thank the IBM team, uh, Doug Davis and Seaman, who gave us a lot of help with networking. And uh, Rackspace team, Adrian Otto, Chris Houghton, and Drago Rosson gave a lot of help. Uh, to, to run OpenStack Ansible to build the whole environment from scratch at CNCF. And of course, a lot of thanks to the Magnum team for a lot of great uh, development in this cycle. Okay. So about Magnum, and the, the mission for Magnum is to manage the infrastructure in OpenStack to host your container. Right? So what it means is that it, it creates the, uh, all the uh, OpenStack resource to build your cluster, the uh, VM, the bare metal, networking, the storage, and so on, and put them all together to, to give you a fully functional cluster. So the value that Magnum gives you is the, the deep integration with all the OSAC services, and also the, all the lifecycle operation to, to manage your cluster. Right? Uh, one key point here is that Magnum does not create a, a new uh, API for containers. So, so instead, the user will just use the, the native API that, that you know, come with the particular platform that you, uh, you use. So currently, Magnum support Kubernetes, uh, Swarm, and Mesos. So in this chart, I'll show some, some uh, uh, of the Newton release. This is not, not complete. And uh, for detail, you can go and uh, check out the release note on Magnum. I just want to mention the, the key, uh, some of the key ones. Uh, we uh, refactor the uh, code that are specific to a container platform so that they're now driver and they're more, they're more they're easier to, to manage. Uh, we no longer talk about Bay, we talk about cluster. Uh, there's a lot of uh, work on documentation. We have a, a, a user guide and installation guide. Uh, and uh, a lot of new uh, support in uh, bare metal, uh, storage and networking. We have a new uh, driver for OpenSUSE. And in the internal engine, there's a lot of improvement as well. We have now the asynchronous operation, uh, uh, option to use a, a storage for DB, database for, uh, for storing the certificate, and notification and rollback and so on. Um, for the Okata release, we, the team is looking at a couple um, uh, features. The, we want to support a heterogeneous cluster. Uh, we want to have a, a uh, last cycle operation to upgrade cluster, and we will support uh, advanced uh, uh, networking for container, lab network for the Docker, and uh, a CNI for Kubernetes. 
and we'll have an uh, additional driver as well, the DCOS and more support for bare metal. Okay. So when we talk about scalability, you probably have heard about companies that run OpenStack on hundreds of thousands of core. So you may think that, okay, this is a solved problem. But uh, the scalability that we look here is uh, specific to Magnum and container, so it's a bit different. Um, we want to look at three different aspects. So first, you know, when Magnum build the infrastructure for your container, there's a lot of things happening at the level of the OpenStack services. So second, once the infrastructure is up and running, and you start deploying container to your container platform, there are things happening at the uh, container platform level. And then third, once your container and container are up and running your app, there are things happening at your app level. So we want to look at all those three levels. So with that, uh, let me now pass on to Winnie Sang. She will take you through the benchmark that we built for uh, doing this study. Winnie? Hi, thanks, Don. Um, so Rally is an uh, OpenStack benchmark test too. Uh, currently, it already support uh, many OpenStack uh, project already. If the project you are working on is not support yet, can easily extend it by uh, adding a plugin to Rally, and that's exactly what we did for Magnum. We add a Rally plugin for Magnum, so Rally can call the Magnum API. And uh, so. Uh, Rally plugin mainly consists of two pieces. They have the context and the scenario. The context is uh, where Rally would create all the necessary resources that you need for you to create before you can run your scenario. And the scenario is the real benchmark test. And Rally is also a recommended tool for uh, production surface to verify their surface always behave as expected. And another great feature Rally provide is the um, it um, export the results in HTML format. And here I have a sample of um, uh, HTML report you get from after you run the test. So here it gives you a really nice view about your, your test run. You can easily tell how long it run, um, how many failures you have, and when it happened, either at the beginning or at the end, and also how long it really run for each scenario. Does it take longer time to run it at the beginning or longer time to run it at the end of your test? and also give you all the um, statistics up there. So it's a very nice summary that you can tell how your test run is. So next, let's talk more about our, our plugin for Magnum here. So uh, mainly we have two types of scenario here. Uh, the one at the top, those are more for the infrastructure level that we will call the Magnum API. So that is mainly try to uh, simulate a cloud administrator to create a uh, cluster on, on the cloud, and then this would help you to show the performance of uh, creating different size of cluster on your cloud. And the second type of scenario we have here, those are at the uh, container level. So those we call the uh, native container client for each um, uh, cluster type. And so, so that is simulating an end user trying to create a container on different type of cluster. So next, I would like to kind of show you some sample of a Rally uh, task file that you can use to call our scenario. So the one on the, oh, forgot I can point. So for this one, that is to create and list a cluster. So in this example, it will create 10 cluster by two thread, and each cluster will have four nodes. Uh, before it run the scenario, the first thing you need to do is everything inside the context. So first it will create the user and then the uh, tenant. And they will create this cluster template. Your cluster is going to build based on this cluster template. So the cluster we're going to build for this sample is a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it will have a five Docker volume. And all the master node and the slave node is going to using the Fedora image, and it will be in uh, the small flavor. And you can access to this cluster in the uh, public network of this cloud. So let's look at the other side. This one is the um, task file to call the port scenario. 
So for this case, it will, ha uh, it will create a 20 port by two thread, and all the port will be using this file as the manifest. And uh, just like before, it will first create all the tenant and user and the cluster template, and this time we also will create the cluster in the context first. So after you create a cluster, it also need to create this uh, CA certificate. We need to use this uh, certificate when later on in the scenario you want to talk to the Kubernetes client. So you need to have this certificate because by default uh, your cluster is uh, TLS enabled. So, so beside the um, really benchmark test, we also run the Google benchmark. So for this test, the first thing we need to do is uh, create a really large Kubernetes cluster. So we need to have at least uh, 800 with CPU in there. And then after that, then we create a lot of uh, engine export in it so it can serve that million of uh, HTTP requests per second. So after that, then we compare our test results with the Google published result. So next, I will pass it to Ricardo to talk more about the um, test result. Cool. Thanks. OK, so I'll continue and build on the what Tan and Winnie explained already. So I'll present the CERN cloud resor results. I'll just introduce why we did this at CERN. So we've started looking at Magnum as our solution for providing container services uh, um, one year ago or a bit more. And the reason we do this is that we have a big clouds and we have big needs. So this is a summary of our cloud as it is today. So we have just under 200,000 cores, a lot of projects and users. We have around 22,000 VMs running at any, any time, 7,000, over 7,000 hypervisors. And you can see here that we already have it running as a pilot service for a few months at CERN. So we, we have a few clusters already created. And we are just opening it to production um, end of this month. So the use cases at CERN and the reason we, have, we need all this capacity is because we have a a big machine, there's the Large Hadron Collider here in the picture down on the left, and then we accelerate protons that uh, collide in machines like the one on the right, which has big particle physics detectors uh, that try to track new physics. Um, the way people do this is uh, these collisions will generate a lot of data, we store it, and then we need to analyze uh, this data. So we have a lot of use cases for batch processing. This means going through the data and generating more data that is more easily uh, accessible by, by the physicists. And then we have end user analysis uh, using Jupyter notebooks. Traditionally, this analysis is quite complicated to do. Uh, containers are bringing uh, really a, a lot of ease of use uh, to this domain. And, uh, what they want is to visualize what, what happened inside the detector with uh, um, pictures like the one we see here, which is uh, actually a Higgs event uh, particle we found a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a lot of people looking also at machine learning to try to do uh, different types of physics analysis using things like TensorFlow, Keras, and also the infrastructure services. We are also thinking of what we can move to containers to simplify the deployments. We already use it for a lot, like, uh, a lot of things, including continuous integration and deployment. So a summary of Magnum deployment. So our initial goals were to integrate containers easily in the CERN cloud. We already have a big OpenStack cloud, and we wanted that the containers are just one more thing, sharing identity, the network integration, storage access. Uh, we wanted people to be able to choose their engines. There's uh, some people that just use Swarm because it's compatible with the Docker API, and just plug it in, and you get a cluster for free. Uh, some people like Kubernetes, other people have tasks that run better in Mesos. We wanted to be able to do all of this, and Magnum fits these this requirements. Um, and then the two main things is it has to be fast and is easy to use. So that's why discussing in the last summit with uh, the people of Magnum, Ton, and other people, uh, we decided to try this, uh, this kind of exercise. Um, so a, a bit of a timeline of uh, the Magnum deployment. We started looking at containers. Uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, we deployed a uh, pilot uh, around February this year, and we quickly got it into a state where we are just about to, to put it in production thanks to the upstream developments. Um, we also did a lot of integration of internal services with the container clusters that I put here. Um, so how does it look now? So if, if you would come to the CERN cloud today, you could use Magnum. Uh, 
And the way we do it, we use shared public templates. So in Magnum, you can describe how your cluster should look using templates. Uh, we provide some predefined ones that people can just reuse. And this we provide, uh, right now, we provide Swarm, uh, Kubernetes, and Mesos with HA versions. These are default configurations. And then as a user, you can create your own and, um, and just deploy it uh, as you wish. And then all the users have to do is three steps. They have one command that is cluster create, and they choose their template. In this case, I'm choosing Swarm. And I say I need a cluster with 100 nodes, which will be 100 VMs running containers. Then I do cluster list until uh, while the, the cluster is, is um, being created. Once it's done, which is just takes a couple of minutes, and I'll show the numbers to, sh to show that this is true. Uh, then you do a cluster config, which is the command that will do the configuration on your uh, environment so that you can use the native API. As Ton described, one of the big things is that you j if you're used, using Swarm, you can just use Docker. If you're using Kubernetes, you use kubectl. So with three simple commands, I get Docker, the Docker client talk talking to a 100-node cluster, and it's very, very easy to, to, to use. So the, the benchmark setup we had at CERN, uh, we often get new hardware in bunches, so we had a chance to uh, exercise this uh, in a, a series of new hypervisors we got uh, just before we put them in production. So we, in this case, we used 240 hypervisors. Uh, each of them has 32 cores, 64 gigs of RAM, and they have 10 gig links uh, between them. Um, we do use uh, the default in Magnum, which is to store the container in the images in Cinder, and some of the results uh, seem to show that it's a good idea to make this optional, and Spiros will talk a bit more about that. Everything is deployed and configured using Puppet at CERN, and we just extended our production set setup with a new cell, which, uh, which runs exactly uh, as the rest of the environment. Um, the Magnum heat setup, so at CERN we split the controllers, so Magnum and heat both have dedicated controllers and rabbit uh, uh, MQs. And uh, we dropped the neutron resource creation. The reason for this is that our networking setup in integration with OpenStack doesn't allow us to have uh, um, things like floating IPs, ports, private networks explicitly created, so we had to do some tweaks in the Magnum setup. Now, here are the first results. We run this uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, at the same time, uh, Kubernetes had published their own result, results, so we wanted to compare. They had reached one million, so we wanted to a bit, a bit more. So we managed to do two million, and we used for this uh, 200 nodes, so 400 uh, with two core nodes, so 400 cores, 800 gigs of RAM. In this graph, in the left one, you see the usual uh, rate of creation of VMs at CERN which is around 200 per hour. In this case, we bumped it to 1,500, and our OpenStack infrastructure just continued going as usual. And then on the right, you see the plot that comes from the uh, test results. Um, on the top, you see the number of requests per second, and you can see it scaling in this animation from uh, as it grows up to 2 million requests per second. We did get some... Um, not so optimal results in terms of network latency, so that's the lower part. And here you can see that our average requests at 2 million was at 40 milliseconds, which is pretty high, and uh, 99 percentile was very bad. So there was some work to, to be done here. Uh, and this was, but it, this was very encouraging. It, like the, ser the service was just uh, deployed a couple of weeks before, and we already had very good results. So some of the observations we saw in OpenStack, so the service is coped um, pretty much as usual. We did see a bump of four, four times in the number of requests in Nova, eight times in Cinder. Keystone requests stayed the same, but we had uh, detected a small problem, which was um, the way heat, uh, Magnum deploys using heat underneath. It creates a lot of trust users that trigger this uh, bump in the size of the revocation tree in Keystone, and this uh, kind of uh, disturbed our memcache D nodes, and we had some higher latencies in Keystone for a while. We understand the problem, and we already have a fix for this. And then on the right side, you can see the, the plots from Nova, Cinder, and Keystone, and it all looks pretty good. Now, 
Then later, we decided to do a second run. Uh, Google republished their results with 10 million requests, so uh, with bigger clusters. And at the same time, we wanted to test not only how much we can do in terms of requests per second with clusters of 200 nodes, like in that case, but how much can we scale to? And they had a cluster of 1,000 nodes. So uh, at the same time, Winnie uh, was developing the, the Rally um, plugin for Magnum. So we, we decided to build on that and just test the whole uh, range. To get in this second run, we did a lot of iterations. There were a lot of tweaks to be done to, uh, to be able to deploy clusters of this, this size. One of them was scaling the magnum, uh, magnum conductor. Uh, at the time, uh, it implied deploying Barbican. Right now, you can actually use a DB backend for the certificates uh, storage. Uh, so there was some, some things to be changed there. A an example here is one of the initial iterations we've done where Neutron just exploded, and uh, we kind of uh, also detected where the issue was, but we had several ones, and we learned a lot about our own cloud also with this. So the results on, of the second run, again, on the right, you have the plot uh, as described before. On top, you have the number of requests, and we got up to 7 million requests per second. On the bottom, you can see that we improved the, the average uh, latency uh, on the network quite a bit. It's still not ideal. There's still a big bump to the 99% uh, percentile, but uh, there's some work to, do, to be done there. And then on the left, left are the results from the Rally plugin uh, tests. Uh, the first column is the cluster size. So we tried clusters of 2, 16, 32, 128, 512, and 1,000 nodes. Uh, the middle column is the concurrency. So for smaller clusters, we can actually do a lot in parallel to, tr to try to really exercise the, the load on the system. And then on the right, you have the average deployment time per cluster. So the results are very good for the first couple of ones. Like for, two, for a cluster of two nodes, we can deploy 50 concurrent ones and get a cluster, a working cluster, a container cluster in two and a half minutes. 16 nodes, 32 nodes in four minutes, and a concurrency of 10, so quite a lot of load uh, at the same time in the system. And then 128 nodes with a concurrency of five, we got just under six minutes. These results are really good. What we did observe is that with all this tuning we, do, we did, we managed to deploy clusters of 512 and 1,000 nodes, but the deployment time goes up, and it seems to start going up linearly. So this was uh, an issue that, that we wanted to understand. It's still okay, like if you, if you really need a cluster of 1,000 nodes, waiting 20 minutes is not that bad, but still there's clearly something to be fixed around here. Um, that we can work on. So for this test, we used a 1,000 node cluster, which in total had 4,000 cores available, and um, 8,000 gigs of RAM. So the tuning, what did we work on? A uh, lot of tuning in heat, especially timeouts, uh, and contacting RabbitMQ. Also scaling what you can do with heat. By the, the defaults for the number of stacks per tenant are ki kind of low. So for this kind of scale, uh, we had to bump them quite a bit. Um, the large stacks sometimes take multiple retries to delete. This is an issue we, we also are looking at. Then in Magnum, we had some minor issues uh, with small bits in the, in the demons that we also already saw in other demons, so they were kind of obvious to fix. Some rabbit issues, and then the flannel network configuration, we couldn't use the default one for a large cluster because we didn't get enough subnets. So this is the labels configuration for flannel is just to be able to scale it up. So this is something you can do in the template. It's not a problem with the service itself. But um, these are things we are summarizing in a nice page uh, to, to, to share with, with everyone. And then the Keystone uh, Revocation Tree issue that I mentioned, the solution was actually to disable memcache because it was a, an issue with the way memcache was being used. It pumped the average latency, but actually the, the, in overall it paid off. So the last bit I have here is um, some more tuning we, or issues we saw. So uh, in Cinder, um, Cinder sometimes gets pretty slow in deleting the volumes, and this triggers hit, uh, hit timeouts while it's trying to delete, and then it gives up. Uh, we, say we saw some tr issues with the hit engine. Uh, so making Cinder optional is actually a good option uh, in general, not only because we saw these issues, but because probably in many cases you will just want to store the images locally if you have SSDs and not in persistent storage. 
Then the heat stack deployment scale linearly, as I mentioned, for larger stacks of more than 128 nodes. Um, we saw these issues. Uh, just to have an idea, uh, the way we use HIT today creates 70,000 records in the database when we deploy one 1,000 node cluster. So clearly there's some improvements there and we have a session with the HIT team to, to look at uh, options to improve this. Uh, then the flannel backend, we used VXLAN and this was after we discovered that UDP wasn't giving very good results. So with VXLAN we got, uh, got better results. Um, and then we might just set or we've set at CERN VXLAN as a default. So this is the summary of the CERN results and uh, I'll pass to Spiros that will describe the results in CNCF. So a couple of months, uh, one month ago, we were lucky to have a 100 node cluster from the CNCF lab and we tried to repeat the same benchmarks that we did uh, at CERN. Uh, benchmarks with Raleigh and the uh, Kubernetes benchmark to achieve millions of requests. So I will say, I will describe a bit uh, the setup in CNCF. <coughs> We've got uh, 100 nodes with 24 cores, 128 gigabytes of RAM, and 10, 10 gigabyte, uh, 10 gig uh, links uh, between the nodes. Uh, we deployed with OpenStack Ansible using the Newton release. And so this is a pretty standard OpenStack deployment that you can get uh, today using Newton. Nothing special about the deployment. Uh, the configuration is HA proxy in front of five controllers about all services and Rabbit and, and the five cluster node Rabbit and three dedicated controllers for Newton. Uh, all these controllers run in LX containers as is done in, in Ansible. Uh, we initially had the Cinder available in the system using the LVM driver, but later due to some unrelated to Magnum or Heat problems, we disabled it to continue with the benchmarks. And also to note that Neutron is configured almost in the same way as in CERN, we're using Linux Bridge. And the difference between CERN and CNCF is that we were using the database of Magnum to store the certificates. These are the results about the, the Kubernetes benchmark. We achieved, we did two rounds of tests. One round was uh, with a 35 node cluster and one with eight node cluster. Both clusters were using uh, very large VMs with 24 cores and, one, and 120 gigabytes of RAM. So we were occupying almost all the physical host. And for the first run, we had in total 840 cores and the second run, and 1,920 cores. In the first test with the 35 node cluster, we used the UDP, and in the second one, we used host gateway, and we compare results with uh, those at CERN and uh, the results that uh, Google published. Uh, for the 35 nodes uh, cluster, we achieved 1 million requests, but uh, with uh, UDP configured, the latency was very bad, 83 milliseconds. But uh, for the 8 node cluster, we were using a host gateway and we achieved uh, a, a, almost exactly the same actually performance with uh, those published by Google. The same and, and for the 99% latency and for the average latency. Then we pushed a little bit more to achieve 3 million requests. The latency increased, but I think it's for this amount of requests, it can be considered reasonable. For, for the rally benchmarks, uh, this is, as I said, the ongoing work. We didn't have the, we, we didn't have a chance to do the same results, to do the same exactly benchmarks as we did at CERN, because we need further tuning for Rabbit, uh, which we added and identified as bottleneck. But for two node clusters, which we managed to do all the tests, we achieved pretty much the same times as in CERN, and the, the difference between the previous table is that uh, here we show also how many clusters we created in total. So when we tried to create 100 clusters in a very short period of, period of time, like under 20 seconds, everything, all clusters succeeded in three minutes, and we had at, at all time 10 clusters creating in concurrent. For 1,000 clusters, we managed to create 219 clusters, but after that, uh, 
rabbit and uh, heat gave up because of the load. On the other set of benchmarks about container creation, uh, these benchmarks weren't implemented when we did the benchmarks at CERN, so we had the chance only to do them in CNCF. Um, we created uh, four, uh, eight containers in total in every COE available right now in Magnum. Uh, <clears throat> this time might seem a bit high, but it includes also pulling the image from, from, Docker, from Docker Hub. So, but in, in a real application, this is also true. When you just deploy a new cluster, you don't have the image usually stored locally. So these are pretty good numbers. The bump at the Mesos cluster is because Mesos is primarily used to manage many different kinds of resources. So in this case, we use Marathon over Mesos. So there are a few more handshakes between Mesos, Marathon, and Zookeeper. So that explains the higher, uh, much higher time than for more Kubernetes. And uh, in this case, Mesos was using as a container engine Docker as well. Uh, we tried to use the same uh, configuration at CNCF as we use at CERN because uh, we already had the feedback that to deploy large clusters and to have high amount of load in uh, an operational deployment, we already knew what we should do. So we used exactly the same parameters for heat and uh, we decoupled Cinder uh, also because Cinder has in, had the internal problems in our deployment, and, but also to scale as well. In the certain deployment, we weren't using uh, floating APs, but in this one, we had also floating APs. So we tried to disable them to reduce the load on Neutron, but we discovered a very nasty bug in Magnum that if you actually disable all floating APs in the master nodes and in the slave nodes, you don't have access actually to your cluster, but this is easily very easy to fix. Uh, we're still working as, uh, as of this week as well, and we hope the next weeks to tune Rabbit to cope with uh, the high loads we want to put in the deployment. And we consider to tuning a bit uh, the operational accountable playbooks to have uh, dedicated Rabbit clusters for each service, like we have at CERN. And a very good uh, result that came out from this uh, exercise that is that uh, the Newly introduced uh, storage backend about certificates works very well performance wise, so it's a very reasonable alternative to Barbican, at least for performance. Uh, so, the conclusions after the test it was some we spent one long month at CERN doing benchmarks and one long month at CNCF uh, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work in our deployments. So as, the, as Don mentioned earlier, we, we did this exercise to measure this, the deployment of clusters, deployment of containers in the clusters, and deployment of the apps. Uh, all the, I think in all three aspects, Magnum is, copes very well, and also at the same time we tested Kubernetes and Swarm that they seem to cope with the load very well. Uh, Nova and Neutron seems to be very solid at this point. We didn't have almost any problem with, uh, in both deployments. And Magnum as well uh, seems to handle very well the load. And as soon as a, a cluster is uh, created, you can actually achieve very good performance compared to very high-end uh, clusters like uh, used in Google. Uh, although Magnum can cope with the load, you must do some tuning to have, uh, to have it working in a very large deployment, as we discovered, but we, are, we will publish all these results and improve our documentation so you can uh, get the up to speed very fast. Uh, things that we need to, need to work at this time is that this exercise was also a scaling exercise for all open stack services, so Rabbit was clearly the bottleneck and we also must uh, do some tuning in heat, and we might consider improving heat in validating the resources where Magnum creates many, many resources. So this is the linear scaling of heat, and for Keystone, we, we track uh, upstream this uh, problem with the very long uh, validation of tokens when too many trust users are created. 
Um, and finally, the question that the title poses, did we hit the 10,000 containers? Yes, we did. At CERN, when we tried to do the 10 million requests per second, we had 9,500 uh, load containers and 500 server containers. So I think we, we achieved our goal. <laughs> Uh, best practices, uh, you should tune your OpenStack. Not all the default parameters work for all, all environments. And uh, one important advice, use only what you need to use. For example, if you don't uh, have um, space uh, constraints, you can disable the cinder volumes to store the container images, which doesn't have to be persistent, it can be volatile. And use the local storage to also leverage uh, fast hardware as like SSDs. Uh, play with your configuration. Do you need a very large cluster with many nodes that we will create many resources in heat and many load on all the services? Or you can use bigger VMs if your infrastructure allows it. Um, we can also uh, have the floating APIs on and off uh, to reduce the load on neutron, but we must fix the, the bug that we have in Magnifest. And you can, of course, choose the a load balancer only if you need it. It's not to be, it does not have to be mandatory at all time. So next steps after this exercise, as I said, this is, this is a continued work. We want to benchmark a few things more about uh, Magnum, like rolling upgrades that are coming to the next release. We also need to benchmark the deletion of Magnum clusters because we had actually more problems in, de in deleting and cleaning up the, our infrastructure than creating. Uh, and as a next step, we will also, as I said, summarize all, the, all our findings in our documentation. Um, at application level, we did only benchmarks about Kubernetes. We're going to do also application benchmarks about Mesos and Swarm. There are some public uh, known ben benchmarks for Mesos to create 50,000 containers and uh, 3,000 containers in Swarm. As an immediate plan that I personally have is to, to make uh, Cinder optional in, in Magnum as a storage for containers. We will also track upstream the bugs of uh, floating AP handling in Magnum, and also we found a bug in the Magnum client. You can't actually easily disable floating IPs. You must do two commands. And we must improve the state synchronization between Magnum and HIT, the way that Magnum pulls HIT about the, st the status of the cluster. And the final question about developers is that I am an upstream developer, so I can't really identify this kind of bottlenecks because I'm running DevStack. So how can we find bottlenecks and I track scaling problems like in systematic way. This is like a, an open question. So, thank you for your time. So it's time for questions. If you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have questions? Or? Yes. yes, please. Yeah, uh, I, I might miss you know the beginning of the presentation. Uh, did you guys compare the uh, what is the penalty running the uh, Kubernetes with the uh, Magnum uh, versus like on VMs versus running on the bare metal? And uh, did you had any work with the uh, Ironic uh, as well integration? I we have only work for Ironic on at development level. We don't have any running in a production service, so we didn't we couldn't benchmark it. We have. So we don't but but you probably can compare it to like any other bare metal running uh, Kubernetes clusters. Like you didn't do this benchmark. No, no, we didn't do this. So n nothing specific for containers, but we did do uh, related tests on VM versus bare metal tests in at CERN, and we saw with some tuning we got to three percent loss uh, running on VMs. Uh, we have published this uh, in our three percent. Three percent, yeah. Any other question? Well, if not, then thank you for coming to our talk, and we'll be here if you want to uh, chat some more. Thank you.